Leader, uh, on Friday, Sinn Féin published uh, a discussion paper entitled The Economic uh, Benefits uh, of a United Ireland. Uh, as you will know, Leader, and appreciate the debate on unity uh, has been turbocharged by Britain's decision to leave the U European Union in 2016, a decision that has exposed the democratic deficit at the heart of the Union. Despite the majority of the electorate in the North, including me, choosing to remain in the EU, we have been dragged out against our will. That is a decision that will have long-term consequences for the Northern economy, for workers, for businesses and for living standards. Despite what, Bar but despite what Boris Johnson uh, and his acolytes in the Conservative Party claim, none of these consequences will be positive. But this is only the latest uh, example in a state of affairs that simply isn't working. We should never shy away from the very live discussion happening all around us. To do that would do our people, all of our people, a huge disservice. The Good Friday Agreement did not settle the constitutional question, Leader, rather it asks us the constitutional question. There is an alternative to the Union, an alternative to Brexit. Irish reunification is a guaranteed path back to the European Union. It gives the North a chance to steer its own course to enjoy the dynamism of an all-island economy. Of course, whenever discussion of Irish unity begins, the question of the subvention for the North is often raised. This is the difference between the revenue raised and expenditure, expenditure Gomelesco, attributed to the North. So difficult has it become to make the case for the Union that this has become the strongest argument in favour of it. It goes something like this, Leader. The subvention is so large that the South could never afford the North, and the North could never survive without Britain. Those who make that argument are essentially arguing that the northern economy has become so weak and so badly served by the Union that it can no longer survive without fiscal transfers. This isn't exactly the strongest argument. Instead, it exposes how weak the northern economy has been served by Britain. So surely we all should aspire to more than that. Irish unity would secure our place as an open, outward-looking, progressive island at the heart of Europe. Of course, Irish reunification is not without precedent. This year, Germany celebrated 30 years of reunification, and though not a model, German reunification is an example that national unity would not just be an Irish project alone, but a European-wide project too. The role of the EU would be even more central in the event of Irish unity. That is the vista before us, Leader, one of opportunity. It could not come soon enough. With the, tw with the twin threats of Brexit and COVID-19, there has never been a better time to take stock to talk to one another and consider our future together and of our future generations to come. I have no doubt this discussion document can contribute to that debate, and I hope colleagues across the House, even those who disagree uh, with Sinn Féin or indeed still think it is not the time for Irish unity, would take the time to read it, because what cannot be denied uh, is that now is the time to start to discuss to engage and to begin the planning. So, Leader, I would ask that this shall play a positive role in this live debate and emulate the already vast levels of political, academic, civic and community discussion uh, that is taking place out there within our society by having statements on planning for new constitutional arrangements in this House as soon as possible. Uh, Senator Malcolm Byrne. Uh, while I agree. Uh, Nile O'Donnell raised earlier a, a, a request for a debate um, on the economic fi feasibility, and I certainly will. I just wanted to, I was mindful when he was saying what he was saying and, and outlining the reasons why he thinks we should have it and why it's timely, um, is that he, t he talked about the, the false positive messages that were given around Brexit. And I really don't believe that anybody that voted against Brexit um, knows, I really do believe that they know there isn't a single positive outcome that's going to happen from the 1st of January or thereafter. And actually, I really do believe that all of those people who voted in favour of it are now starting to realise, and if they don't by now, they definitely will by next year, um, that the positivities that they were promised were nothing but you know, an absolutely fake political last grasp of trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. And I really do feel sorry for them, and I don't say that disrespectfully, because I think the outcome and the negativity of the outcome um, hasn't even begun to dawn on some people yet, but it absolutely will. And not least of which our own people, because um, the economic severity of the impacts, I know that are going to try and be cushioned by uh, the deal that please God will be done in the next couple of weeks, but there's no good in Brexit for anybody. Um, but I will certainly ask for that um, debate.